So the journey begins. So this is our beautiful view and we're just on to um, Grey Hill where we're going to connect with some of the oldest stones. So we're just entering onto the old track. Absolutely beautiful, nearly there, nearly up the top of Grey Hill. Get in there, girl, get in there. Wow. Just look at that. It is absolutely gorgeous. Here comes our lovely Linda. So worth it, my darling, so worth it. I'm just wondering if this is the burial cairn. And the burial cairn is where the, um, the ancient dweller, the ancestors of this land, would have buried their land. And usually, um, their piles of stones that are covered with turf, and, and sometimes the side of the earth is changed, but it's just that there's As Linda and I reached the top of Grey Hill, there were just fantastic views. You could see the River Severn and the bridge. And we just sat down here and had something to eat and a nice hot drink. And it was just so nice to connect. You could see for miles just all different landscapes. The River Severn, the woods, that was Wentwood. And then we had the beautiful rainbow gifted with a rainbow. So lovely. I don't know, maybe something to do with the alignment or something. For the midwinter? Yeah. Or Bilbury. I thought it was Heather. So it's going to be Bilbury and Fox Club and Bracken. That's situated up here. Yeah, and Gorse. You can read up what the essence of those flowers are and then it'll tell you some of the essence that you could pick up on here. Well, Gorse is very good for um, despondency and oh. putting the faith back into situations. Oh, all right. And. Um, it's when we take two steps forward, one step back. Right, I think I could do the taking some gold. But look at this amazing it's stone beautiful. circle. Look at it. This it's is just fantastic. <laughs> so, Linda, I think we should um, do a little bit of connection going on here. Yeah. How beautiful! What a beautiful stone. And it's a pudding stone. And what do you mean by a pudding stone? Well, it's made of lots. Of got lots of little stones in it. So it's built up with the layers. Yeah. It's lovely. And look what there's like a a cut in the land over there. Now that's interesting. The ridgeways over there. Okay. On those far hills. Right. Here it's almost like there's a cut in these rocks that line up with that dip in the far hills. That's amazing. And there's a lot of fallen stones here, so I think we need to go and explore it a little bit. Yeah, how gorgeous. You can see the layers of the pudding stone, and as you get very close to it, you can also see all the little stones that make up the stone, as you can see in this picture here. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time now. I'm just going to really connect to the uh, 
God, these are still warm, Linda. I can feel some heat coming off this a little bit. Feel the, come and feel the, come and feel it. Yeah. Can you feel that? Oh, yeah. That is so nice, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> So we're just going to have a moment. And, yeah, um... just going to have a moment. <laughs> just taking it in, connecting with nature. The sun's shining. There's a breeze in the, hair, in the air, as you can see, blowing through our air. You can see the gap over there in the hills. Now that, when you bend down, it, it's in connection with that gap in the hill right over there. It is still a bloody It is a big site. It's like another additional stones. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's like they've fallen down, haven't they? Oh, look, that would have been an upright one as well. Yeah. We took some quality time with the stones. We decided to really just sit and be with the stones. So a big thank you to Karen and Ray for introducing us to these lovely stones on Grey Hill. It was a really nice experience. 13 low stones remain of a circle just over 30 feet in diameter. One unusual feature at Grey Hill is that the stones are butted against each other like a continuous wall. A solitary stone, tall, six feet high, stands outside the circle with a larger outlier nearby. Within the circle are a large a Within the circle are a large of large fallen stones, perhaps the remnants of a destroyed chamber tomb. It, if so, that would suggest that the stones marking the circle formed a curve and the outlier stones may have been part of the entrance. In 1944, a local writer named Fred Hando suggested that, the, that two of the standing stones were arranged to form an alignment of the midwinter sunrise but this claim is not widely accepted. The stone circle has been dated to the Bronze Age, roughly 2000 BC. The area is full of numerous prehistoric rain, remains. Within a short distance of the stone circle are other standing stones, several burial cairns, a possible stone road, hut circles and a D-shaped field enclosing, dating, dating to the late Neolithic period. As we started to descend from the hill, we came across some amazing old ancient trees. They were hundreds of years old. You could really see just how magnificent they were. We just, as we descended through the path, we decided to take just a couple of pictures, just so you could see just how old these trees were. They were beech trees mainly, and um, the views around there were just spectacular. So we really enjoyed just spending a little bit of time here as well as we started our journey back down. It was nice to connect with these old trees. Very special moment. To finish off our day, we came across a lovely little calf that was just on the side of the woodlands where we had hot chocolate, brownies and just enjoyed our little robin for the end of the day. Thank you.